Welcome to the Future of Tourism podcast. I'm David Peacock. Stop owning your own content. Young leaders are stepping up. Bring everyone to the table. And imagine their world anew. Twenty-four years ago, the United States Tourism Operators Association founded the Travelers Conservation Fund for awarding tourism development-related grants. Two decades and a half later, that prescient moment in the positive power of tourism has evolved into the innovative, humanistic, global tourism development and enabling organization that you and I know as Tourism Cares. Tourism Cares has a strong history of bringing players from across industries together to collaborate and drive development and innovation. They have a hyper-focused local model coupled with a high-level industry overview and network. Their mission: unite the travel industry and be a global catalyst of positive social, environmental, and economic impact for the people and places of travel. Greg Takahara is Tourism Cares CEO. He's a founding member of the Future of Tourism Coalition, and trust me on this one, he's someone you definitely want to have a long conversation with about the future of this industry we care so much about. If you ever get the chance. Hello, Greg. How are you? Where are you? What's it like? Hi, David. Thank you for having me.、Uh, I am at home in Orlando,、uh, a home that、uh, is fairly recent for me,、uh, having spent.、Uh, The last three years in Boston,、uh, we recently、uh, just shut our doors.、Uh, and when I say that,、uh, certainly Tourism Cares hasn't shut its doors. But、uh, like so many, we have gone fully virtual.、Um, so our nine、uh, employees, our staff members, are all across the country now.、Um, and so、uh, with that,、uh, I relocated to Orlando.、Uh, we have two in the Bay Area. We have one in Seattle, one in Chicago. Three remain in Boston and one in Providence, Rhode Island. Well, I'm a I'm a personal big fan, and I I believe we get a tremendous amount out of dedicated people who can work virtually, and、um, it just works out when you have that combination. It's, it's hard to manage, but I've seen a ton of benefit myself. So I, I couldn't agree more with you on the fact that being dispersed is sometimes an innovative thing.、Um, it's nice to get back together. But that said, let's move right into this.、Um, tourism cares. I gave the briefest of overviews. Can you just outline it for us? Where are we at?、Uh, you have a long history of tremendous、um, contributions to this industry.、Um, sometimes at the most poignant of moments,、uh, such as the relief stuff you did in and around some of the disasters、uh, in, in, the, in the early part of the the twenty two thousands, you've evolved into a, a remarkable. Force for good with a with a broad goal that you have、uh, not just inspired people within your organization with, but have, have joined others in the world. So let let me hand it to you and tell us about Tourism Cares, please. Great. Well, thank thanks for that, and you you know summated our mission.、Um, so I'll I'll take you back exactly.、Um, you know, for us,、uh, I guess you when you go back to、uh, the Travelers Conservation Fund, you are going back. Two decade, two and a half decades.、Um, it was really the、U、United States Tour Operators Association and a couple of other associations,、uh, most notably the National Tour Association, the American Society of Then Travel Agents, now Travel Advisors,、uh, as well as IATA, that kind of decided that decided at that kind of juncture moment to bring their philanthropies, bring their foundations under one umbrella, which then became Tourism Cares. And you may recall, post 9/11,、um, then President、uh, Bush、uh, made a call to the American people,、uh, make, made a call for、uh, volunteer work,、uh, or you know, for everybody to roll up their sleeves essentially and give back.、Um, and that was、uh, the industry's cry at that time. You know, how are we going to catalyze our groups together to do exactly that? And Uh, I was fortunate to be one of 300 travel and tourism professionals who gathered、uh, in 2003 at Ellis Island、uh, for the first ever Tourism Cares event, and I remember it just it hit me so hard at that time in terms of the impact that we were able to make just in a couple of days,、um, having those、um, National Park Service representatives talk about. 
um, literally emotionally talking about how it would have taken them months uh, to do the work that was done really in the matter of two days. Wow. Um, Craig, I, I got to tell you, I, I did not know that that was the genesis of the Ellis Island meeting. Wow, that is that's an incredible story. Please, I, I keep going. I just had to share. Yeah, and, and for me, the, the feeling that I had was, and then I, I drank the Kool-Aid very early on, uh, was that, uh, you know, I really wanted to give back um, to the industry that had given me my livelihood. Um, and to be surrounded by my industry colleagues and to get to do this great work together um, was just so gratifying. And, and that really was the kind of the foundation of Tourism Cares uh, in the early days in terms of that focus on volunteer work. Um, and I kind of call that the days of, you know, the before and after picture. Uh, we showed a lot of before and after pictures and they were dramatic and they were great. But we kind of recognized that as we were evolving, we needed to deepen our impact and we needed to deepen our impact globally. Um, and as well, you referenced the fact that we did a lot of disaster response then as well too. So uh, we've been down to the Gulf Coast many times post hurricanes to uh, work with those communities. And, you know, that was some of the most impactful work and very emotional work uh, but we also, you know, see this opportunity to kind of be, kind of transform with the times. Uh, unfortunately, to be a disaster response organization right now would be uh, like responding to something every week, <laughs> unfortunately. Indeed, indeed, um, indeed. We're looking at the bigger issues of sustainability and climate change now, um, and really how can we move the industry's needle in terms of progress toward goals um, that really are sustaining goals for us in terms of an industry. Um, it's so interesting. I just did a presentation at the CITA conference um, in DC. I just got back last night and um, I spoke to a group that hasn't been together in three years. For many of them, the last time they saw me, uh, I was wearing my insurance hat because previous to this, uh, my day job was in travel insurance. Um, spent a lot of time talking to people about risk management and asset management. And the thing that I said to them was that in so many ways, my job hasn't changed. Uh, we're still talking about the same thing. We're talking about risk management. We're talking about asset management. The difference is, is that I used to have an insurance policy to essentially transfer risk to. And now the types of issues that we're talking about that threaten our industry are not risks that we can transfer over to an insurance policy. They're, they're ones that have to be self-managed and they're ones that we have to work collectively together in order to accomplish. Um, but it's so interesting that my own personal evolution has been such that, you know, those insurance principles really translate to a lot of the work that we're doing with Tourism Cares. It's just a, a really, uh, just the way that you look at it. Well, the, the investment in sort of a preventative bulwark against erosion, and I mean that in, in a metaphorical sense in destinations, right. not just physical. Um, we've, we've talked about tourism cares genesis. We've talked about some of the very high level thinking and sustainability, but and the and the little, literally on ground fingernails in the dirt, you know, recovery stuff. But there's also the training and education piece, which has become so apparent around the world. I see destinations on the on the verge of becoming their own identities who don't have tools or resources to leverage what they have, which is incredibly unique cultures or ideas that can be shared with the world that don't need to be rolled over, but they need those resources now, planning resources so that they can collectively shape their future. Tourism Cares has stepped very clearly into that lane. You, you are doing destination inspirational visioning and planning um one manifestation of that is 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 your uh, your your impact uh, series in, in your victoria sustainability conference but you've done a lot of on the ground work in tourism training and planning at this plan excuse me i put that the other way planning and training at this point as well right yeah we we are getting ready for our meaningful travel summit in victoria british columbia next month uh, september 28th through 30th uh, where we're going to be spotlighting, you know, local change makers, uh, 
really doing incredible work um, in the Victoria area around nature-based experiences, talking about how they're managing wild, wildlife and wilderness areas, um, talking about the symbiotic relationship with indigenous groups. We're talking about maintaining healthy marine life in that area, all necessary in order to really have their tourism product continue to thrive. Um, that is, I think, what everybody goes to Victoria for. Um, and uh, that's uh, the, the very delicate balance that they're dealing with right now. And uh, we're hoping that by bringing our group of over 100 travel and tourism professionals, they will leave inspired by the work that that local community is doing. They will see the level of collaboration that it is being um, you know, that is being conducted between the various different segments, um, the government there, uh, as well as the work, as I mentioned be before, with the indigenous groups, um, ensuring that there's always a local voice at the table um, and kind of take and more or less taking that home with them. Um, we always use the last day of our meaningful travel summit as a, like kind of a call to action breakfast. Hopefully they've absorbed the education. They've gone into the second day where they've rolled up their sleeves and they've worked side by side with the community to really get a sense of the work that is being done. And then they go home inspired uh, with a, a whole set of different tools and a whole set of inspiration that they can then use to operationalize sustainability into their personal lives, into their organizations, uh, and into their communities. So, so let's talk about that just for a second, because um, you know, if if I had to pick, um, you know, a shining star in the in the march towards regenerative and sustainable tourism, for sure, the work that Destination Greater Victoria has been doing has been a standout in Canada for about four or five years. The impact conferences there. Paul Nursey and his team have done great work to nurture this. The relationship with the mayor, mayor is it Mayor Phelps? Mayor Phelps is incredible um so you're walking into a really ripe situation there it's kind of it must be kind of exciting to be work, working in a place where you know you're going to have your progressive groups at the table but you're bringing other other um unusual suspects to the table too aren't you yeah it's you know it's i talk about again in evolution in terms of our meaningful travel summits i i think that for us we used to target emerging destinations in particular to try to kind of like squeeze out nuggets and bring these nuggets to light. But we're also seeing the value of taking what we would call really high bar best practice destinations like Victoria. We're going to in April, we're going to Norway um, and, you know, really putting forth um, something that can only be described as a lifestyle that you know that that they foster that they've essentially grown up with and they truly believe in with their heart and soul and it's shown in everything that they do um, i was in norway last year for ustoa's sustainability is responsibility summit we saw examples of how development projects take into account not only the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, but the 144 targets that belie those 17 goals. And you actually see it graphically all broken out, all evaluated. That's the level, the, how deep their thinking is relative to sustainability in terms of any project that they approach. Well, and that's and that's a specific focus of tourism cares is the alignment with other bodies for the practices the 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 practice of best practices sharing, and that's happening a lot, which is a good sort of segue to talk about Athens, where a you're going to talk about the 177 measurements directly as part of as as part of the Green Tourism Summit and and, and um, uh, uh, sorry the Future Tourism Coalition. Um, but you're also going to, 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 to drill more into that sharing of best practices, I take it. So tell us a little bit about Athens, please. Well, I, I say that with a, a little sadness in my eye, given the fact that, uh, unfortunately, the Future of Tourism Coalition Summit Day 
uh, in Athens is directly conflicting uh, with our Meaningful Travel Summit in, in Victoria, British Columbia. And uh, I unfortunately don't have the superhero power of being in two places at one time. Uh, that being said, uh, we are going to report directly from Victoria into Athens to talk about the work that we're doing there. Um, because as you mentioned, the Future of Tourism Coalition was one of those silver linings from the pandemic um, where you know, Tourism Cares along with five other NGOs um, decided to join forces again, um, rep you know, representing the adage of, you know, we can only do better together. And I, I think for me, what I love in particular about the coalition is that we spend a lot of time talking to our communities about the necessity of collaboration and how we need to put aside competition and we need to foster collaboration. And to me, you always have to walk the walk. And, and this is our way as nonprofits to show that we don't only make those pronouncements, but we also walk the walk. Um, so we get to work together. Um, we get to still spotlight our own individual toolkits, but we recognize that as a collective toolkit, we can do a lot in particular for destinations. Uh, we put together 13 guiding principles that are centered on destinations and what we feel is proper destination stewardship and the types of principles that should be, you know, foundational for destinations. Um, and we've gotten over 700 signatories to those um, guiding principles. Um, we've been fortunate to work with the likes of our coalition partners um, who have been very active in terms of drafting the Glasgow De Declaration, um, which was featured at COP26. Um, had the opportunity to get to do some small edits to those Glasgow, to that declaration. So feel very much a part of that. Um, and similarly, we've received over, you know, several, several hundred signatories to that particular declaration. Um, and that's a, it's just a growing movement. So um, we're excited. It's going to be our first time ever together in Athens. Um, it is in conjunction with Green Destinations annual event. Um, and we're hoping that we're going to have more in-person events as a coalition together. So, Greg, in there, you've also taken a particular focus on destination organizations, and we're doing it in many in many different disciplines around the world now. We see a network of organizations throughout the world that are particularly connected to the place they are in and the world around it. And I think there's a huge and emerging role for destination organizations to play what may be one, one of the most very important roles in sustainability, which is connecting those networks. Um, talk a little bit to me about the next three years in the world of destination organizations. You're working with a lot of them. I'm working with a lot of them. They're all willing participants in this. They need to get started. They need tools. But let's talk specifically to, to our audience of, of destination executives here about what comes next. Sure. Well, I mean, we've already spent so much time within this conversation talking about evolution, right, David? And, you know, be it the evolution of tourism cares or, or the evolution of the, the origins of the tour, future of tourism coalition. I, I think one of the most recent evolutions within tourism cares work is the fact that we would put together these meaningful travel summits and we'd start to work with these destinations like Jordan like Colombia, <laughs> and you know, I, I just stated, you know, we're going to be in Norway. Um, our own domestic destinations, like you know, Victoria, and the work that we've done, you know, we've referenced in New Orleans, for instance, you know, in particular with a focus around disaster response. Um, and the byproduct of those summits has been our meaningful map, working with those destinations to build out a meaningful map typically highlighting social enterprises, but not exclusive to social enterprises. They could be nonprofits or other entities or organizations that have a social environmental bent to them um, and building out a map of those particular communities. And I think the evolution now that we're seeing is that rather than that being just a byproduct of the summit, we're seeing that we really need to center our work around those meaningful maps in a much uh, bigger way. 
And that really requires um, that collaboration with those destination organizations to help us identify those particular um, map pins, as we like to say, um, and then be able to spotlight that on the map, promote them, um, help them to get those into those tour operator itineraries and those travel advisor uh, recommendations, um, and then really bring a light to the local communities. Wow, um, Greg, and you, you hadn't talked about Meaningful Map, and I've read about it, and it's been fascinating me for a while, and you just got me thinking about four ideas I want to talk to you about later on. But may, maybe just tell people a bit about Meaningful Map, because in there, uh, there's a tremendous amount of work around authenticity and storytelling that, that's endemic to everything Tourism Cares does, and I'm glad you sort of hit on it. But uh, I'm, I'm starting to see a big picture of Meaningful Map, too, that I didn't see before. So just tell us a little bit about that, please. Yeah, I, well, it's, it's interesting. A, a lot of this has been, like I said, you know, an evolution, a culmination. And I, I think, quite frankly, I'm, I'm grateful to, you know, be a board member on the United States Travel Association Board. Um, that has given me a, a lot more exposure to destination representatives um, to be able to talk about our map and to be able to partner with a number of them. We partnered with Travel Oregon, for instance, to develop map pins uh, for a meaningful map of Oregon that is part of our overall meaningful map of North America. Um, and, you know, we have vetting criteria that go along with that. Um, it's, it's, Guide, they are guidelines, um, but we want them to be actual sellable, you know, either sellable attractions or organizations that are, you know, operating organizations that uh, typically just don't have that exposure to the mass tourism marketplace. But but they're also all they're also all tied deeply into the ethos of what tourism cares is about. The people who are sourcing the content for the meaningful map they're not they are really telling the story of why this is, is a meaning quote meaningful destination yeah i mean it, a, a lot of that was spawned you know when we talk about the disaster recovery work that we did in new orleans was identifying for instance you know um you know a a, a local um cafe reconcile uh which was an inner city um an inner city restaurant that essentially trains inner city youth um you know and and really provides them all the tools that they need to learn about hospitality from the ground up um, and it is those types of places that we would then visit when we would go there that we said we really need to put a spotlight on places like this these well, are the places and, that and, people and not face. and not not just because they're great stories, but because as as our friend Greg Oates at MMGU, I like to say, you know, uh, in Fort Worth during the pandemic, because they'd engaged, because they were storytellers of their own place, then when the pandemic hit, the various channels were still on, and people could still off the, uh, experience authentic Fort Worth. It, the the same they just line up the, i mean it's, it's not just great stories it's the stories that drive people together and, and link them together I, I love that piece yeah exactly so, so. Mean, meaningful map how big is it now um it's growing we you know we're building out the map pins within um north america um i would say i did i haven't done a recent count i, I so I, I hope i'm not completely off base but I, I you know i would say we're you know of 100 map pins or something along those lines uh but uh you know again i think the the global work that we need to do with a meaningful map. I think we've always kind of segmented that and said we have a meaning, a global meaningful map. And then but the global meaningful map has only grown as a result of the work that we've done within our summits. So we have that meaningful map of Jordan, our meaningful map of yep, Columbia, yep. meaningful map. Yep. Uh, we're, we're looking at ways that we can build out a greater global meaningful map without necessarily having yep. to do a summit in each one of those places. And that you know, requires those types of relationships. Uh, we've talked to a number of different destinations who are very keen on you know, creating, for instance, like a fam trip around 
those type of meaningful experiences. In, in, in three years, every destination will have its own cognitive or frame of reference meaningful map anyway. That's because the, the, the tourism, the traveler will demand it. Data will demand it simply to, to be able to direct us. It'll be fine, yes. This I'm is going to be exciting. Kind of this, this, okay, I'll talk to you more about it. This is exciting. This is really exciting. Three three years. We're gonna we're gonna tip the tick the clock right now. Twenty three years. All right, three years, and see how many meaningful map implement, implementations you have that have other applications attached to my. It will grow logarithmically. This is very interesting. Yeah, but don't. Yeah, well, thanks for that. Now you got me betting on my own show. I think that's an <laughs> indictable, indictable offense. Anyway, um, we're we're running a little low on time. Athens and um, Victoria are back to back. They're both at the end of the month, right? At the end of September, yes. What, what's the um, date? Athens, on, what's what's Athens, the date on Vic? September twenty ninth. Um, that is the Coalition Day, and then uh, the Meaningful Travel Summit in Victoria, the twenty eighth to thirtieth of September. Okay, we're running long on time here. I've taken up a big piece of your day, and you've been in transit for a day at least. I know as well. So, just as we part here, um, words to the industry. We'll circle back with you, obviously, on progress. But anything you just want to share as you go, and we roll into. The September, October, pre-Christmas, you know, get things done time and period. I think the, the feeling that uh, there is is that travel is indeed transformative. We talk about it. It, it can sound very cliche, um, but we all know the types of experiences that we've all felt. Um, we're excited about our 20-year anniversary next year. Um, reflecting back on that first ever event in Ellis Island. Uh, we are looking to do a collaborative effort with a number of other organizations, including the Travel Foundation and others, um, you know, next fall that we're going to have an exciting announcement around. Um, you know, we have a good friend in, with the Blacks and Travel Collaborative and Stephanie Jones, and we've had some conversations with her. So we're going to have an, a very exciting announcement around the corner about a, a very unique summit uh, that's going to really catalyze um, culture, community, and climate um, all under, you know, um, all under one umbrella. Um, we all we haven't even touched on diversity, equity, inclusion, but we know how important that is within the whole sustainability picture as well. As well, Greg Tegahara, like I said, if if anyone ever gets a chance to sit down and talk to you, don't miss it. It's a great pleasure every time we talk. I, I really enjoy it. Thanks for spending your time on this. Uh, have a great trip. Um, um, stay well. All right. Thank you, David. <laughs>